can you come upstairs later and give you another pair of cards else besides these big clunky ones? Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Vrdhadi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Vrdhadi Ya Saudanandana Brajajan Randhana Ya Saudanandana Brajajan Randhana Ya Munatiravana Chari Jamuna Tiravana Chadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kundabi Hadi Kundabi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Kunjabi Hadi Gopi Jana Malabha Giri Vrdhadi Giri Vrdhadi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Vrdhadi Jasodanandana Brajachanarandana Jasodanandana Brajachanarandana Jamuna Tiravana Chadi Jamuna Tiravana Chadi Jaya Radha Madhava Tunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Srimad His Divine Grace Vakta Swami Shida Prabhupada Ki Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Granta Rajshri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jain Samveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jain Nithai Gaur Pema Nandi All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga The camera is gone How does it work? 
Huh? Maybe you should have two cameras, one that can be there and one that can be there. Huh? <laughs> so, one day of the week it works and six days of the week. Hey! 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 What's that? I couldn't hear. Multiple cameras. But it's a few thousand dollars to have multiple cameras. Okay, the truth comes out now. You want a camera up there to see the deities, right? Was it you? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We're reading. This morning, text 37, <clears throat> from Canto 6, Chapter 17. Iti Bhagavato Devya Prati Saptum Alantanaplalantama Murdnasa Jagrahe Shapam Etavat sadhu lakshanam. Iti bhagavato deya devya. Prati saptum alang tama. Murdnasa jagrahe shapam. Etavat sadhu lakshanam. Iti Bhagavato Devya Prati Saptum Alantamaha Murdna Sajagrahe Shapam Etavatsadho Lakshanam Iti Bhagavato Devya Iti Bhagavato Devya Prati Shaptam Alantamaha Murdna Sajagrahi Shapam Itavat Sadhulakshanam Iti Bhagavato Devya Rati Shaptum Alantamaha Rati Shaptam Alant Etavat Sadhu Lakshanam 
यथवतो दिव्याशम मूर्जना स जग्रहे शापम साधुलक्षण यथि दस भागवत द मोस्ट एक्सलटेड डिवोटी देव्या ऑफ पार्वती प्रतिशुप्त टू मेक ए काउंटर कर्स अलंतम able in all respects mordna with his head saha he chitraketu jagrahe accepted shapam the curse etavat this much sadu lakshanam the symptom of a devotee <clears throat> translation the great devotee chitraketu was so powerful that he he was quite competent to curse mother parvati in retaliation it's pretty powerful curse mother parvati but instead of doing so he very humbly accepted the curse and bowed his head before lord shiva and his wife this is very much to be appreciated as the standard behavior of a vaishnava report by shiva prabhupad upon being informed by lord shiva mother parvati could understand that she was wrong in cursing chitraketu king chitraketu was so exalted in his character that in spite of being wrongly cursed by parvati he immediately descended from his airplane and bowed his head before the mother accepting her curse this has already been explained narayana para sarve nakutashchana bibhuti Chitraketu very sportingly 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 felt that since the mother wanted to curse him he could accept this curse just to please her this is called sadhu lakshanam the characteristic of a sadhu or a devotee as explained by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Trinada Pisu ni chena tarora pisa hishnuna a devotee should always be very humble and meek and should offer all respect to others especially to superiors being protected by the supreme personality of godhead a devotee is always powerful but a devotee does not wish to show his power unnecessarily however when a less intelligent person has some power he wants to use it for a sense gratification this is not the behavior of a devotee again the verse iti bhagavato devyaha prati shaptam alantamaha murdnasa jagrahe shapam etavatsadu lakshanam the great devotee chitraketu was so powerful that he was quite competent to curse mother parvati in retaliation but instead of doing so he very humbly accepted the curse and bowed his head before lord shiva and his wife this is very much to be appreciated as the standard behavior of a vaishnava Shrimad Bhagavatam is so wonderful. 
this um, this verse uh, Narayana Paraksarge Nakutashanya Bibhyati is one of the, the highlights of the whole canto. It's repeated over and over and over and over and over. The qualification, the, 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 the qualification of attachment to transcendence and detachment from everything else, svarga, apavarga, naraka, detachment from all the rest, and singular attachment to the Supreme, to transcendence, to loving relationship with the Personality of Godhead, which can be, and in the case of Chitra Ketu, it happened, which can be um, amazingly um, exhibited even in the most difficult circumstances. Even in the most difficult, I mean, our, our circumstances are puny, really, compared to what we hear from um, Chichiketu. Imagine. Getting, I mean, par Parvati is heavy. <laughs> She's heavy. And getting cursed personally, directly by Parvati, that's heavy. And just, ball. And then, it happened. It wasn't like, you know, and then nothing happened. It happened. He became a demon. So here he is, this giant, huge form with a trident in his hand and your, your, your assignment, your job description is go after Indra and get killed by him. Yay, that's my service assignment. Not like go out on Sankirtan and go in Harinam or go in the kitchen and cook a samji or it's have this giant, huge, touching the sky practically, huge form, powerful with a trident in your hand and do battle with the king of heaven and have to persuade him to keep going and, you know, kill me. I mean, wow. One can serve in any position if one has attachment to the Supreme. And without attachment to the Supreme, it's a bumpy ride. And we're, we're you know, so many, so much suffering due to our own impurity of Calculating and maneuvering and manipulating and posturing and arguing and struggling and mama maya doratiya. This is he. So he's he's spoken of in the verse as Bhagavataha. We know this from the first canto. What's the verse? Which speaks of service to the Bhagavata. Who knows the verse? Our sloka rajas here in the assembly. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. How what's the whole verse? Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati. If you want Bhakti to Bhavati to arise, awaken within your heart. I mean, not like just do service with a little drudgery. 
भक्ति भावति नाइष्टुकी नाइष्टुकी कॉन्सलेसली नो इट्स इट्स सर्विस टू द भागवतस एंड देयर्स वी नो फ्रॉम द परपोर्ट देयर्स टू कैटेगरीज द बुक एंड द पर्सन भागवता इज मींस इन रिलेशन टू भगवान सो द बुक is in relation to bhagavan i just started studying tattva sandarbha because i'm planning to present it hopefully in um thanksgiving time and um uh, gopi pranadana prabhu's writing explains that a, a cl- classic literature at the very beginning the um there is there's a a standard um uh, set of rules that such a literature a composition should follow and one is the vachaka and vacha what is said and um what is being spoken about the person speaking and the subject matter and the relation between the two so the bhagavatam is that it's what's being spoken about krishna that's so that's the what is being spoken about and and this the speaker is shukadev goswami or the bhagavatam itself so the relation between what's the relationship between the bhagavatam and the subject matter that one wants to speak about krishna is the subject matter <coughs> so um in relation to this the the bhagavata is in relation to krishna and the person is in relation to krishna because the person is speaking the bhagavata the person is speaking about krishna both are um the doorway or the means for bhakti or bhavati and so service to both and service to both <coughs> the bhagavatam is hearing it and but not just hearing it carrying it within your heart and living it that's service to the bhagavatam and similarly the service to the person it's not just you know clean the floor and wash the clothes and 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 offer some meal it's the same it's the message and then carrying the message that's the best service the best service i'm just thinking of this exchange with uh a morning walk conversation with shila prabhupad and this like the context is nice we were coming we were in brindavan and coming down that road which didn't have all those buildings and you know shops and it wasn't so it was very simple it, it there wasn't anything it was just fields so anyway coming back and as we were getting a little closer to the gate uh we could hear the kirtan and prophet looked around in the it was a very small group that morning of persons on the morning walk and he asked why are there why are there not more devotees on the morning walk you know everybody looked at each other and didn't know what to say and prabhupad said when there's opportunity for personal association with the spiritual master one should eagerly seek that out vapo and then pause and then he went on he had stopped he didn't he put his cane down and was like making a little message to us and when there is that physical association there's also vani just like he was doing in the morning walk he was physical association and that was really nice but you know we were eager to hear so even in the physical association he went on to say between the two more important is the hearing of the instructions and then when there isn't the opportunity for physical association then vani 
So with the physical association, without physical association, Vani rules or is the emperor. But the, the, the instruction, what's the value? There's cleansing that comes just from hearing. But for bhakti to arise, then it's living the instruction. Then to live the instruction, the instruction has to be in your heart and it rules. It, it, des it decides what you do, what you say, even what you feel. It's, and and it, it rules your life. It, it carries you into um, the realm of transcendence through devotion, just by that sound vibration. So, Chitraketu is being addressed in the verse as Bhagavata, um, the most exalted devotee. But then further in the in the verse, he's why is he the most exalted devotee? Because he has sadhu lakshana, or say it the other way around. He has sadhu lakshana because he has attachment to the Supreme. Because he has attachment to the Supreme, he's indifferent to attaining heaven or attaining liberation or taking a hellish birth. He's indifferent. That's high. So he's 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 therefore Bhagavata, but then one who's not Bhagavata, like you know the most exalted devotee, that person is to then cultivate A and B. A is attachment to pleasing, to to taking the instruction of the Bhagavatam and taking the instruction of the person who's teaching the instruction of the Bhagavatam into one's heart and living it, serving in that way. Cultivate. And then the sadhu lakshana B part will follow. There's the horse and there's the cart. And the cart follows the horse when it's operating properly. So Krishna decorates his devotee with those nice qualities and the devotee wishes for the pleasure of the personality of Godhead, the devotee wishes to please him. That's what a devotee means. And therefore they cultivate such qualities. The sadhu lakshana is the first. So the, the, the translation, sadhu lakshana, the symptoms of a devotee. Lakshana means characteristics or symptoms. Um, <clears throat> in the third canto, Kapila Dev speaks to Devahuti about, similarly about bhakti or bhavati, the manifestation of bhakti. And bhakti has its, he doesn't use the word lakshana, but it's very similar. It's bhushana, sadhu, bhushana. Bhushana means ornaments. You know, the pujaris have a whole supply of different ornaments and they place the ornaments upon the deity well, It's part of the, the puja and the, their deity dressing. Prabhupada's explanation is when the pujari is decorating the deity, they're decorating themselves. I mean, not like placing the ornaments on themselves, but they're decorating themselves with bhakti, with with the, the qualities of a devotee. He gives the example, I like this example very much. When you apply tilak, you're pl applying tilak on your forehead, but you're looking at the image in the mirror, and it looks like, at least in the image in the mirror, you're putting tilak on the image in the mirror. But you're not putting tilak on the image in the mirror, you're putting tilak on your forehead. Similarly, so somebody may use cosmetics or something like that. So you're decorating, but that's that's something else. <laughs> this, you know, devotion works in the opposite way than, you know, attention goes to me and let me become 
attractive because, you know, I want to be attractive. I want people to, to say, wow, he or she is attractive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, an, that's an, another energy. But that the, that's the internal energy is decorate Krishna. And when one decorates Krishna, Prabhupada's point is, one becomes decorated. Krishna is already all attractive. He doesn't need any ornaments. The ornaments become attractive. Their, their attractiveness becomes enhanced by decorating Krishna. Yes. Supposing we wore, you know, some of the... It's not the same. <laughs> the ornaments become attractive because they're adorning Krishna. So, this is just like, I'm just exploring the, um, the dynamic or the flow of how qualities come. Sadhu Bhushanam or Sadhu Lakshanam. The, the horse is this service, as the Bhagavatam teaches, a service to the Bhagavata. And one who serves the Bhagavata becomes decorated. So the, the, the particular quality that's being focused upon here in this morning's verse is humility. Really simple. How can one take the interest of another? How can one have a loving relationship where you take the interest of the beloved, the object of love, as superlative, as governing whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you say, whatever it is that you feel. If there isn't humility, is it possible? The answer, it's not possible. <laughs> it's, it'll, it'll, at best, it's this, you know, entrepreneurial exchange. You do for me and I do for you. We're, we're lovers, or we're friends, or we have a relationship. And it's, it's all very, it's so unsatisfying, it's so yucky, from a transcendental perspective. And that's, that's the realm that we're so familiar with, and, you know, we just keep doing it, negotiating terms of a relationship. There isn't a possibility Bhakti Siddhanta's language. There is no love in this in this material world. Wow, that's heavy. You know, people will say, "Wait a minute. I love my wife, or I love my dog, or I, I love my whatever. I love my money." <laughs> love, in that sense, is a transcendental. Or say it the other way. Flip it around the other way. Love is otherworldly. If we want to really have love, or you want to enter into the realm of otherworldliness, we have to place the interest of the beloved way above our own. Way, no, there's no, like, you know, there's no negotiation. There's no struggle. No problem. That's Vaikuntha. But we struggle, because... We haven't taken that position of surrender. We think there's some shelter, there's some happiness to be found in negotiating senses and sense objects and hanging out with the sense objects in this way or that way. And whether it's gross or subtle, like, you know, being appreciated by others because I can sing, I have an intellect, I can manage, I can cook, I can da 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 da, -da whatever it is, and I'm going to get appreciation. I'll have I'll be accepted by others. They'll be they'll be nice to me. And they'll like me. And that makes me happy. And then it goes the other way. Somebody doesn't, or somebody says something or something, and then, whoa. 
the sixth canto is filled with that. You know, Indra's going up. Oh, now I'm really happy. And then I'm, oh, I'm really down. And everything's miserable. And now I'm happy again. And the Ferris wheel. Although he's a devotee, he's he has the affection of Lord Vishnu. <clears throat> But he's always in this, you know, enjoying and, and miserable Ferris wheel, like us. Well, you know, maybe to some degree, maybe to a lesser degree, but certainly to some degree. It's all incomplete. It's, it, it's, it's not satisfying. And so we struggle. And it's, it's all unnecessary. That there, there's a, the real solution is take full shelter. You won't take full shelter if you're not humble. I've got my, my program. We, we, we may not advertise it. We've got our program. We may say in platitudes, oh, Prabhu, something, something, something. We've got our program going on. And so we're not satisfied. Never satisfied. And therefore, then also, these sadhu lakshana will not be manifest that it you know there'll be the you know the lower nature will show itself you may cover it but from time to time the lower nature will show itself and whatever however it shows itself lust anger greed pride just Dirty things that are very embarrassing, not satisfying to anybody, and you know we're we're holding we're 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 captured by them, and will manifest them as long as that full shelter of Krishna is not there. No, humility is is a necessary entry point. Prabhupada in the purport refers to Shikshastakam three. Trinadapi, Sunichena, gives the Sanskrit and then paraphrases the translation of the whole verse. It's necessary. We, we, can't, we can't even find happiness in chanting. We can chant and, you know, lots of nice things happen, but to enter into this Bhaktir Bhavati realm where true devotion that cannot be checked by anything, it's not created by circumstance, it's not stopped by circumstance, Yenatma suprasidati, to enter into that bhaktir bhavati. There has to be these this quality of humility. So I'll just repeat something I said earlier. Where, where, we can't get that quality of humility unless you put the horse before the cart. Place the interest and the message of what the interest of Krishna is first. And we find that through scripture, through Bhagavatam, and through the spiritual master's teaching, or those who are giving us the teachings of the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatas the book in the person. Place that in our heart and humility is easy. It's happiness, it's protection, it's satisfaction, it's without all the struggle and the misery and the yada 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 program. The verse, so in, in Kapila Dev's instructions to Devahuti, mentioned this, just touch on the verse. Another very famous, often quoted verse, Titikshava Karunika Surda Sarvadehinam friend to all living entities. All living entities, not like my friends, and then there's my enemies, the ones that I watch out for. Ajata Shatravak Shanta Sadava Sadabushanam. So that this Bushanam is again this word ornament. And it's the, the it, it's it's very precise word. The ornament is is a lakshana. It's the character. So it, it's ornaments you may, you know, put on and take and take off. 
but as sadhus ornaments aren't you put them on and you take them off they're they're intrinsic to that sadhu and therefore the word lakshana in this verse is also very appropriate and um, last point <coughs> I really like the word so I read it three times in a sporting way he smiled and accepted the curse in a sporting way meaning you know there, there was a certain levity in his response you know my mother wants to curse me with a big smile so be it I, I accept that she wants to curse me and I accept the curse the, the point that's being made in the purport is that how, how can one be undisturbed in that Krishna's protection is there and Krishna's protection was there for Vritrasura more so than for Indra Wait, I got this thunderbolt that could kill Vritrasura Vritrasura went back to Godhead and Indra got his worldly kingdom back so which would you rather have? Go back to Godhead or have a worldly kingdom? Depends on so that what, what, what our heart is. Well, we could easily say, no, I want back, go back to Godhead. But we, we have other wants. We, have, we want recognition. We want appreciation. We want to, as Prabhupada's saying in the purport, exhibit our little power, whatever that little power is. And why do we want to do that? We feel good about ourselves and other people say, wow, that person's powerful. Something, something. It's, it's, the principle is subtle. If it's not in check, then even a high personality can become crushed or fallen or deviated if that subtle principle is not vigilantly guarded. We need each other's association. We, we need people to assist us in pointing out, you know, we use this word now, feedback. It's so valuable. Who's, who's um, that person who doesn't require wholesome, well-wishing feedback? Even if that well-wishing feedback doesn't have complete information and therefore misunderstanding and so on and so on and so on. It's Kali Yuga. So... The, the, the real shelter is the holy name. The real shelter is the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. And those that are pursuing a life sincerely and ardently, a per, pursuing a life of living according to the teachings of the Bhagavatam with a heart that's pure. We, want, we, we, we require that association. And we require that... <laughs> Receiving those instructions, valuable instructions, and making them ours, making them our, our life, bringing them into the heart. Shrinvanti Gayanti Grinanti Sadavaha. Such a nice verse. Bhagavatam is so rich, so such a treasure. And <coughs> cultural point in the verse is um, I'll just read it again. A devotee should always be meek and humble and should offer all respects to others, especially to superiors. You know, it's, it's culturally, though, even those that aren't devotees, that's a cultural point. What to speak of devotees? I mean, but those who are carrying bhakti. 
How can there be, you know, you, you miss that point, not respecting superiors. And is that a characteristic of bhakti? Not a characteristic of bhakti. It's not the essence of bhakti, but it's a characteristic of one who's carrying bhakti. And neglecting superiors or worse, disrespecting superiors, that's not bhakti. It's not the essence of bhakti, but we're one, who, one who has the characteristic of a, a, a not, aside from the Bhagavata, just a bhakta. So training in what are the characteristics is part of what our life is in, in Krishna consciousness, living in the temple or practicing wherever one is practicing. And then placing that as something that will please Krishna. So, if we don't have it, then we cultivate it. On what basis? Pleasing, you know, this Bhagavata Sevaya. Pleasing Krishna through the that which is in relation to Krishna, the Bhagavatam's instruction to do so. And the teachings of those who are giving the message of the, the Bhagavatam, the other Bhagavata, serving those instructions, bringing them into our heart and living accordingly. And there's, there's, there, there's certainly other stuff besides those things. They just get displaced. That's all. That's the, that's the principle of surrender. Anakoyasya sankalpa, pratikoyasya varjanam. That which is favorable to bhakti, awakening of bhakti, I accept it. That which is unfavorable, I toss it to the side. I don't invest contemplating, well, maybe a little bit, in moderation, or something like that. That, that in, it's a, a bhakti inhibitor. One who was wishing, this, so it's, it's, bhakti is not just behavior, it's, it's love. Based on my desire to have, to restore my loving relationship with Krishna, I, that's the, the, the fuel in the tank. And then you can turn left and right with your foot on the accelerator and pressing the brake pedal when you need to. Wishing to awaken my loving relationship with, with, with Krishna. I want to be there. I want to be with Krishna. <laughs> And he may do with me whatever. So Mahaprabhu was teaching. He may do with me whatever he likes. As with Chitraketu. He, he, she may, Parvati may do with me whatever she likes. She's my mother. He just smiled. She wants. I accept. No disrespect. No back talk. <laughs> you know, you know in, in this world that I was recently in New York and walking along the street and, and, and saw this situation with a mother with her child yanking the child and yelling at the child. The child was crying and she was yelling and oh my God, what a horrible thing. Poor kid, the poor mom. You know, because probably when she was little, same thing happened. Now she's doing the same thing. So what? What's the cure? And you know, besides the, the grosser manifestations, the, the all the other ones. It's bhakti. That's our that's our shelter. And how do we get it? Bhagavata Sevaya. Let's go. Okay, I'll end there and see if there's any discussion. Charinishta. Who's got the microphone? Go ahead, just speak. You have a booming voice. Uh, what happens in the case of like an offense where um, maybe not just respect, but something's done with enmity, how a Vaishnava receives that without. Um, 
Because in the material world, you know, someone's feelings may get hurt. Sure. But a Vaishnav, if he he tolerates that, but there may still be some hurt. Now, how does one distinguish if that's, you know, just false ego or... It's false ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want respect and I got disrespect. That's the hurt. My shelter is, am I being honored or dishonored? It's my shelter is duality. Do seeing the difference of the soul, who I really am, because yeah. the soul doesn't take offense yeah. to things that happen. Yeah. And therefore, the beginning, it's not like, that's not the higher platform, it's just the beginning platform, you tolerate. So the hurt may be there. Now what do you do with it? You tolerate it. Why? Because you understand that hurt is arising from sense perception. It's exactly what the, it's exactly what the verse says. Matra sparshas dukontaya. It's arising from sense perception. It's duality. Now, who am I? Hurts all. But I, but I, I'm, I, I at least theoretically know it. And I'd like to, you know, be in full realization of that, and, and I, I'm not there yet, so now what do I do with that feeling of hurt? Tolerate it. And take shelter of transcendence instead of duality. But Vaishnava, he doesn't actually get offended. I mean, well, someone the, may make an offense, but he may not take, he never takes offense. Or sometimes I feel like we hear that depends his on how, was offended. It depends on your level of Krishna consciousness, what you take and don't take. But a transcendentalist doesn't take offense. Chitraketu didn't take offense. Although Lord Shiva had already said, you're wrong, Parvati, he's not wrong, you're wrong. So he didn't go, yeah, I'm justified. She's wrong. He didn't go there. That, you know, that's the Bhagavata. Highly advanced. So then, you know, we may not be highly advanced. But at least, you know, we can, you know, the beginning, Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, is you tolerate it. Knowing what it is. It's, it's illusion. It's not reality. Well, you know, what's your threshold of tolerance before you scream? Depends what your shelter is. And, you know, whether there's mind and sense control, practice of mind and sense control for, for a higher purpose. So, therefore, we have nice higher purpose activity. Rise early, ten mangalarti, you know, we discipline the mind and the senses. We do things, behaviors that help the mind and senses become controlled. But that's not the essence. But it helps. It helps curb. You know, our, our, our threshold becomes greater before we scream. And then, but but it's it, there's no substitute for purity. Ultimately, something else. Yes. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for the class. This is a follow-up to a Chinese's question. Um, there may be some temptation to respond for the practicing devotee, tempting, uh, temp, you know, thinking, well, this person needs to be instructed, so they're acting or speaking in this way. You know, maybe I'm, I, I'm willing to tolerate it, but. If they're treating me like this, then how are they going to treat other people? So then maybe I should kind of respond so as to instruct them. Um, I could see different angles of vision there, uh, but I would be, be interested to hear your perspective. Two things. Responding is fine. It's not like <clears throat> you get an F if you respond. And you get an A if you don't. That's not the message. So responding from the position 
of the servant and in the mood of the servant. And seeking intelligence from Krishna, not to win, but to be, you know, in Krishna's service in a way that's pleasing to Krishna and effective. But that, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a whole other thing than just responding. Then the second part is, you said it twice, and you know, the language that you used was instructing. And I that that makes me a little uncomfortable because our our what's our position specifically in this case with a superior with Chitraketu and Parvati no question superior now Chitraketu is highly qualified so specifically so qualified he could counter curse but he saw Parvati as his superior his mother. And so he chose, he could have said, but he chose not to. Now, we may choose to say something, but to say something is not instructing. The, the, the language itself is revealing. No, the, the position of instructing, we know from um, Bhagavad Gita, the, the, the austerity of speech is exhibited when one when, when speaks the truth palatably. And in the purport, Prabhupada speaks about when you have the position, you may do so. And if you don't have the position, that is, you know, the relationship where you're the teacher and they're the student, or you're the parent and they're the child, or you're the, you know, you have that relationship established, then you can instruct and if it's not your position, the language of instructing is inappropriate. One can respond in, a, in, a, in, a, in the mood of service with another person that appear or a superior, but not in an instructing mode unless that's the relationship. So you can inquire or discuss, I have a question. You know, I'm not clear about this, and so forth. I mean, imagine, just as an abstract, take it for example, supposing Arjun started instructing Krishna. You know, you said this, and you said that. Let me, let me instruct you, Krishna. You know, it's not, not the right position. And we should take the position according, uh, the, the, when, we, when we respond, if we, if we choose to respond in the mood of service, it's with the right um, decorum and etiquette. Something else? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for a wonderful class. Um, my um, question and comment is in relation to this whole discussion. So um, you made the point that um, um, our problems are puny compared to um, Chichiketu. Yeah. And I was kind of meditating on this point, like when we see all the sadhus in the scriptures, it doesn't matter which scriptures, like Jesus Christ was crucified, Haridasa Kaur was beaten in you know, 22 marketplaces, but they still had the power to forgive. But we're only beaten or crucified with you know, negative words or disrespect. So one thing in connection to this humility point is that I really appreciate it from Bhatsami Notakor and um, is that I always keep in mind is that he said just as a doctor, in chapter 8 of Jaiva Dharma, he says just as a doctor tolerates, you know, all, all the outbursts of his sick patients, so we should also show mercy to everyone because unless, you know, if we're, you know, we have some contamination or some sickness, if we respond, if we, you know, you know respond, um, you know, so people's, let's say, disrespect <laughs> only because we think we're worthy of respect. So my question is, is that when we're born in a particular body, like an African-American body or woman body or whatever, we fight different issues. Like if someone calls me a racist word, you know, I get upset or whatever, whatever issue, whatever body we're born into. So is it the proper mentality to have 
that this is Christian speaking to me. He's telling me to be humble because in my previous life, I was also potentially a racist, you know, person, et cetera. And if um, basically in essence that we see Christian everywhere. So is it the proper mentality to give yourself some type of peace of mind that this is Christian speaking through me that he's only giving me a little suffering you know, you know, I'm trying to become a devotee. He's only giving me a little suffering, but he's telling me to be humble because in my previous life, I was also, you know, potentially, a, you know, racist, sexist, you know. Or whatever, whatever. else. Whatever. Yeah, whatever else. Fantastic. But yeah, yeah I, I'll just touch on another dimension, and I'm sure you're very familiar with Prabhupada's response to Bhakti Tirtha Swami's disclosure that, you know, there's racial discrimination in the Hare Krishna movement. And immediately Prabhupada's response was, if you become disturbed by that, you know better than they are. And what does that mean? It means the conception of the body, and it cuts both ways. So if one is beyond the conception of the body, then there isn't the hurt. Now, what are you going to do about it is, you know, the response topic. Should I remain silent? Should I do this or should I do that? But, you know, like, I really like what Narada Muni, when he was insulted by Navakovira Mani Griva, what did he do? A beautiful description of, he just was thinking, what's best for them? What can I do that will be beneficial for them? Even thinking like that, you may not even, you may not have the answer. <clears throat> thinking like that, you're protected. You're protected by the internal potency. And so you you may remain silent, or you may you may speak something strong, or you may whatever you may do. But it, you know, if it's in the mood of service and you've connected with super soul and you know, lessons from scripture and, and so forth and so on, then um, you can remain peaceful whether it's, you know, you raise your voice in response or, you know, you don't say anything or whatever. It's, you know, so tolerance, what you described is I'm getting my deserve, so you, we tolerate because we're getting our deserve. Whatever that may be, we don't know, but we're getting our deserve somehow. Krishna's kind. He's instructing me. I should not be a perpetrator of these things. And higher is, then how can I be of service in this circumstance to this person or whatever, whatever, you know, the group or you know, the, the, the bigger picture of life? And how can I be of service in, to this kind of energy that comes? You know, so aside from the particular exchange, there's, let me become, for me at least, let me become situated in a condition of purity where not just this person and this exchange, but, you know, the, the bigger picture of the contaminations of the age of Kali, what to do about it? I can't do anything about it if there isn't purity. And we work together towards purity and address, you know, discrimination on the bodily platform. We have to raise consciousness. How do you do that? So let's do that. Let's go. I can put my energy enthusiastically in that. And that's the best response. I mean, overall, besides the particular circumstance, the, the individual and the exchange and how you process it. Stay on the service platform. Transcendence is included. <laughs> it's a subset. Looks like we're done. Thank you very much, Prabhupada Key.